Yeah, so I will speak about multiplayer diffusion games and graph classes. So work I will present in TAMC next month or two months. It's a joint work with Laurent Bultard and Vincent Froze, which I cannot pronounce both names correctly, but almost. Yeah. Okay, so so we have a game. We have a game of with K players playing on a graph of n vertices. So each player chooses one vertex. This is the strategy of each player to choose only one vertex. And then you have some kind of a diffusion process over this graph. And at the end, the payoff of each player is the amount of, is the number of vertices colored in his color. So to have a very simple example, and please stop me if you have some questions between. So to have a very simple example, this is the graph, and we have two players playing on this graph player one and player two, and this is one possible strategy profile. So player one chooses this vertex and player two chooses the other vertex. And then we have this diffusion process. So each currently uncolored vertex, which is neighbor of only uncolored neighbors and, and vertices colored with one color, get colored with this color. So these two guys get colored with color one and these two guys get colored in color two. Now in the next time step of the diffusion, we have another two uncolored vertices, but they are adjacent to vertices of two colors. So they kind of get confused and get out of the game. So they get completely out of the graph. And now the diffusion process ends because even if we run more time step, no uncolored vertex can be colored. So the payoff of player one is three and the payoff of player two is also three. And now we can ask whether this is an Nash equilibrium. So can one of the player improve by moving to, by choosing a different strategy, by moving to a different vertex. And for this example, I think it's true, so consider a different strategy profile. So player two stays in the same place, but player one now chooses, yes? So they choose vertices simultaneously? Yeah, so you can think about it as they choose it simultaneously. It's not like one choose and then the other. And then if they choose the same vertex, then this vertex gets confused and out of the game. So the payoff is zero for both if they choose the same vertex. Okay. Yes. So this is another strategy profile. Player one moves to a different place, and now we can also run the diffusion process again. And we have in the first time step, these two guys only are adjacent to one, so they get colored in color one. This is only adjacent to two, so it gets colored in color two. Now in the next time step, this one gets color one, and this gets out of the game. Now it's not over because this one is connected to one, so, so you see that now the payoff of player two is two and the payoff of player one is five, so it increases. So this was an improvement step for player one. So is the game clear, the rules of the game? So as you maybe notice, it's somehow related to Voronoi game. So Somehow the vertices which are closer to one player, to one player uh, will get colored in the, in the color of this vertex. So it's kind of partitioned to this Voronoi sets, but it's not exactly Voronoi game. So for example, if you run the game with these strategy profiles, with, two, with three players over this graph, then you can run it and you see after one time step, two time steps, three time steps, for example, this vertex gets color in color three, even though it is closer to player one and two. So the distance is two to either player one or two, but it's distance three to player three, but it still gets colored in the color of player three because somehow player one and player two competed over this vertex which got confused and out of the game. So two players competed and then the other player won over them. Yes, but two or more, so. Uh, yeah, so you can think about it. So there is some work about Voronoi games. And in this model, if I'm not wrong, then they somehow share the vertex. And then you count the payoff, each when each one gets half point for this vertex. This is not like assigning in random, but kind of sharing the vertex. 
close to what you say, but not the same. And so there are some work about this model, but I'm not completely familiar with it. So. Mm, yes. Okay, so this is the model, and it was introduced by Alon and two other in an information processing letter, maybe 2005 or so. And several other works have been done on the model afterwards. Maybe the most important to us is, I forgot to put it, but it's from AIM 2014. Uh, so I will tell you partially what, what she did and what we did kind of over on top of it. So, and, and somehow the, the motivation for the model, think about the social network and you've got several firms, companies competing over the social network. So each firm, company can give the product to, to one peop, to one person in the social network and then his friends maybe will buy the product as well. But if you get in your feed in Facebook two, two uh, opposing products, then you get uh, out of the game somehow. So if you see some of your friends buy iPhone and some of the friends buy Samsung, then you don't buy anything. And maybe you buy Nokia, but you somehow get out of the game. So. Yes. Okay, so what is already known, some easy observations about the model. So for example, for any number K of players and on any click of any size, there is always Nash equilibrium. So this is very easy to see, just consider a strategy profile where each player is on a different vertex. Then all of the other vertexes get confused and out of the game and no player can improve by moving to other place because it doesn't matter. So the player of the payoff is one if there is no uh, collision, like you said before, there is no collision, and maybe zero if there is collision, but nobody can improve it. Uh, okay, so this is for clicks, it's very easy. And also for stars, there is always Nash equilibrium. One player will choose the middle vertex, then the other will choose, doesn't matter which vertices on the outside of the star, and nobody can improve, so. Mm, also fairly simple, maybe a bit less obvious is consider a cycle. So for two players on a cycle, just put them on consecutive, on adjacent vertices. Then they somehow, sh each one get half of the cycle and, and nobody wants to improve, nobody wants to move. So, so some of them can, can move and still have the same payoff, but for Nash equilibrium, we, we require strictly improvement. So. And also for a path, it's kind of the same. You put them on adjacent vertices in the middle of the path, then each one gets half of the path and nobody can improve by moving to the other half because you will get strictly less. Okay, and for grid, it's also not very hard to see. Somehow you need to care for, for the parity of the grid. So if, if N or M, the size of the grid is even or odd, but you also put them next to each other. If you have two players, you put them on adjacent vertices in the middle of the grid and they somehow share, somehow each gets half of the grid. So it's not as easy as this, but almost, so. Okay. So kind of all of, of all of what I showed you up to now is known in this paper that I said before and in other papers. And mainly what we ask is what happened for more than, than two players. So for two players on path and cycles and grids, it's fairly easy what happens, but it's not completely clear what happens for more players. So this is somehow the overall scope of the work. So understand on which graph classes there is equilibrium for which number of players. So to be more specific, so on which path and for which number of players k greater than two, there is Nash equilibrium. And the same for cycle, so take any cycle, take any number of players, when there is equilibrium or not, and if there is, then find it. And we actually wanted to know what happens on grids for more than two players, we only could answer for three players. And we want to have some kind of uh, general statement. So think about, so fix k to be seven, then you ask what is the minimum number of vertices you need in order to have a graph which there is no Nash equilibrium. So for example, if you have only one vertex, then just the profile that everybody chooses the same vertex is obviously a Nash equilibrium. If you have two vertices also, you get Nash equilibrium. That, what is the minimum number of vertices you need in order to have 
some graphs on this number of vertices with no water equilibrium. So this is the last question that we want to answer and we could answer it partially. Okay. So let's see, let's start with paths. So path graphs and, and let's start with only an even number of players. So for two players, I already told you, you put them in the middle, adjacent to each other, and they somehow each get half. And so think about four players, for example. You can think about putting them in equidistance position, but this wouldn't work because, so, let's say that this is, so, so you, so you get a line graph, and if you put them in equal distance position, then the players in the boundaries of this, this I can catch it maybe. So, so think about this as a, as a line graph. So you can put maybe at equal distance position. So. But, but, but this wouldn't work because this player would want to move closer to this uh, to kind of have all of this this part of the graph. So, and also this player would want to move here. And then, so you see that to have an equilibrium, you somehow have to, to pair the vertices, to pair the players into pairs, and then nobody can improve by moving closer to its table. And in general, so this is not in general for I don't know how many vertices, but so this is six players on, you can count how many vertices, but somehow, so you, you, pair, the, you pair the players and then you put the pairs in equal distance from each other. So then, so this is a strategy profile, which is an Nash equilibrium for six players on this graph. And you can see that, so these are somehow the vertices at the end of the diffusion process. And you see that each one gets roughly the same. It's not exactly the same because of parity issues, but it's roughly the same. So, so you need to care exactly where, where to put the pairs, but the general idea is just to put, to pair the pairs and put them in equal distance from each pair. So this is for even number of players. Now you can ask what happens for, for odd number of players, and it turns out that you somehow can do the same strategy. So you pair all the players, and you got another player which does not have a pair because the number of players is odd, and you kind of treat it like a pair. So, so this is easier with an example. So, so instead of having three pairs with six players, we have three pairs with five players. We kind of merge these two players into one <coughs> player. And then, all, uh, and then again, you can convince yourself that that this lonely player cannot improve by moving anywhere in his boundaries and cannot, move by, cannot improve by moving somehow outside of the boundary. Yeah, so this is the coloring of the graph afterwards. So, so this strategy for, for even number of players works starting with two players, you just put them in the middle, and it also works for any greater even number. But for odd number of players, if you have, so if you have five players or more, then you can do it, right? But because you can have these two pairs, like here, you have five players, you put two pairs in the boundaries and one lonely guy in the middle, but he cannot improve. But if you have only three players, then you can put one pair and then you can put one guy, but he will somehow want to move closer to them. So let me show you. So, So this is what is drawn is in there, but if you have only only three players, then you can have you can put two of them as a pair, you can put the other one here, but then he would want to move here closer. So this is obviously not an equilibrium, and, and for three players on path there is no equilibrium. So the proof to see why there is no equilibrium is kind of using this fact. So if so consider any strategy profile of three players over any path. Now you have somehow two options. Either they play really close to each other or, they, or you have some, some uh, distances between each other. So, so if you have some distances, it could be also a profile like this. 
two things that they draw from this one is. So you have some distances between the between the players. Now each player would want to move to the middle. So this is obviously not an equilibrium because they can improve. Now the second um, second case is that they play really close to each other. So so there is no distance between between the players. But then you can see that this middle guy could jump outside. So this also, because he jumps outside and he gains all this part of the, of the graph. So this is obviously also not the Nash equilibrium. So, so for three players on path, there is no Nash equilibrium. But for any other number of players, there is Nash equilibrium. OK, and you can, so now we, we can go on to cycles. And you can immediately see that you can get all of the strategy profiles which work for path. If you just close the path to a cycle, then this is, will be also Nash equilibrium for cycles. But now also, also for three players on a cycle, you can have, you can have a Nash equilibrium. You just, so if you put two players adjacent to each other, and then the third player opposite to them, then you can convince yourself that this is a Nash equilibrium for three players on any cycle. So to summarize this for paths, almost for any K there is Nash equilibrium except for three players, but for cycles there is always Nash equilibrium for any number of players. Any questions so far? Is it clear? Okay. So this was everything, I think, kind of easy observations, and now maybe the main uh, technical difficulties for grid. So as I told you before, for two players on, on the grid, you can put them next to each other in the middle of the grid. But for three players, this obviously doesn't work. And then we ask whether there is Nash equilibrium or not. And the answer is that there is no Nash equilibrium. And the way we prove it, the general idea is kind of similar to what we did with three players on a path. We kind of look at all of the possible strategy profiles, group them into cases and then see that each case is not an Nash equilibrium, then it holds that no strategy profile could be Nash equilibrium. So the cases we consider is the general idea is also similar to these three players on the path. Either they play far from each other or they play close to each other. And now play close to each other means that you can somehow bound the three players in a let's say three by three subgrid. This means that they play really close to each other. Then you can convince yourself that if that somebody can jump out of this three by three grid and gain the whole outside of the grid. So, so, the, so we have kind of a big case analysis. So either the strategy profile makes the players play close to each other, then we solve it and we see, and we, and we prove that no such strategy profile could be an Nash equilibrium, or the play far from each other, and then we also kind of look at all of the possible options for strategy profiles when they play far from each other. So let's delve a little bit into it. So um, before, so we also, so now we consider when they play far from each other, and we also distinguish between two cases. Either there is one player who strictly controls the other or not. And strictly controls means just that, so, so if you have, you have a grid, and you have three players on the grid, so let's say this is the first player, now you say that the first player strictly controls the other two, if the other two, two play strictly in this area, so somewhere here. So this and this. So the idea is that somehow in, in one of the quadrants that is defined by the position of the first player, the two players strictly contains in this. So nobody is contained in this, in this line. And they both contain in the same quadrant. So this we say one is one strictly contain, controls the other. And the idea is that if this is the situation, then this player can improve by moving closer to the other. Because he already plays somehow far from the other two players. So he could also gain something in the boundary between, between him and the other two players. So to make it more concrete, so we distinguish between three cases of one player controls the other, and these are the three subcases. So, so this is the player who controls the other, and we say, is this position free or not? 
So if the position is free, means that the other players play in this region, and then you can convince yourself, as I said before, that this player could move. So you should read it as this is the current position, and the star is the position that you that this player could improve if he goes there. So you can see that everything that this player gains from before, he still gains, and he also gains something on the boundary between him and the other player. So this is why this is an improvement step for this player. Now the other two cases is the is when this is the position of the third place. He still controls the other two, but this position is taken. So. Of course, if he moves to this position, then he will gain payoff of zero. So this is not an improvement step. But if this is the case, then the third player could be either, either in one of these axes, and then he could move a bit closer, or maybe he could be there, but, and also it could move closer. So you can read it as this is the position of the first player, the second player. This region says where the third player could be, and the uh, black star means w the improvement step for the third for the third player. Okay, so this slide somehow summarizes all of the possible strategy profiles when the players play far from each other and one player completely controls the other. And we see that in all of these subcases, it's not an Eshe equilibrium. So we can continue to the other subcase, which is when the three players play far from each other, but there is nobody who strictly controls the other two. And then you also have four different subcases of this. So this is the position of the first, the second, and where the third guy could be. And then you see that, so this is very simple. If he plays far from the other, he could just move closer to them. This is somehow, somehow like we, we already see, so in three players on one path. So here they, they only play in one path, then they should be close to each other. And yeah, I'm not sure if it's very interesting to go over all of them, but you see, so the first player, the second player, the third player, and he could move somehow closer to the other two players and he gains a bit more. So, so these are not, so these two are not Nash equilibrium because the third player, the black player, could move closer to the other two. And this is not Nash equilibrium because this player could move again here. Okay, so these last two slides rule out the possibility of Nash equilibrium of all of the strategy profiles when the players play far from each other, meaning they are not bound into a three by three subgrid. And now we got tons more of subcases where they are they are bound in a three by three subgrid. So it's not very interesting to go over all of them. I want, just want to say that for some of them you can so you can see the improvement step when you only look at the subgrid. So I think that, that this one, for example, if this guy moves here, this is already improvement set. So you don't need to care what happens out of, outside of the grid. But for all of the other, or most of the other, the general idea is that, so if, if, this, is, if this is the big grid, and, and the three players play somehow in a very small subgrid, so all of them play somehow here, then, then one player, um, at least could move just outside of the grid to here and then gains somehow all of this part. So if the overall grid is larger than five by five, this seems to be enough, then somebody can move outside and gain the whole grid because they somehow compete over a small region. Okay, so this finishes the proof that there is no Nash equilibrium for three players. Now you see that it's not very very easy to see how to generalize it to more players. So maybe for even number of players, it could be easy. I didn't think about it too much, but it could be that if you pair them and somehow put them in equal distance, like you did in, like we did in PAT, then this could work. But for odd number of players, I don't see a better way than this case analysis. And for five players, it's already a big mess. So, so it would be nice to have a general, nicer way to prove it instead of this big uh, somehow case analysis. Okay, so this finishes the stuff on grid. Uh, but, um, yes? If you uh, examine the one, uh, that should be Nash. Really, no? You mean if you have four players on a grid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
do some for players. Uh, one, two, three, I go. So, and then this player gets this quadrant, this is... I think that for this one, then, then one of the players can gain sometimes by moving here, and then somehow gains all of this. I'm not sure, but... So I play with it a little bit. Um, and this simple idea has him to hold for each... So it depending what is what is M and N, yeah? So if N is very loud, then maybe you know, somebody could move there. He, he, he really could swing like three, and then goes to three, and... Yeah, then, then, then it looks fine. Then it would work. Yes. But if it's uh, very... Mm -hmm. If N is candidate, uh, then of course um, it's advantageous. Okay. okay, so there is a special cost in there. Yes, and I don't know what happens in general. Okay, so after we treated grids, now I want to consider this general draft question. So, for, so start from two players. So if you have only two players and let's say two vertices, then surely you have Nash equilibrium. It doesn't matter if there is an edge between the two vertices or not. You put one player on one vertex, the other on the, on the other vertex, and this is Nash equilibrium. Everybody gets a payoff of one. Now, even if you have three, three vertices, then you could think about it and see that there is a Nash equilibrium. Just put one on each vertex. Also for four. Now, so I ask what is the minimum number that there is no Nash equilibrium? Well, somebody wants to guess what is the correct answer? Well, it's certainly above two and three, but... Seven. So... Again, I don't have a nice way to, to prove why it is. I basically ran over all of the graphs up to eight vertices. And this is the, the, this is the smallest example of a graph where, so this got eight vertices and there is no Nash equilibrium for two players. And somehow surprisingly, I think, so this is the only graph on eight vertices with no Nash equilibrium, up to isomorphism. This is the only one. And for smaller vertices, then, I mean, for seven or less vertices, there is always an equilibrium. So this is for two players, and so this is somehow the solution for two players. And now I, I ask what happens. So what is this function for any k? So f of two is seven, but what is f of k? Um, and now I don't have a definite answer. So, so f of k is surely above k. I mean, at least k, because if you have k vertices, and K players, it's the same. You put each player on different vertex and you have Nash equilibrium. And for an upper bound on this function, I only have this, this uh, counter example. So this is for, I think for nine vertices and with 15. Yeah, so this is 15 vertices and there is no Nash equilibrium for nine players. And you can generalize it. So So, so the idea of this counterexample is that you have um, somehow one main path of three and some other path of three vertices each. So you can have this number as big as you want, and this gives the generality of the counterexample. And the idea is that if you have only one player playing in, let's say, so so think about this. But on three, if you have only one player playing there, then he should play here, right? Because if he plays here, he surely loses to some other player. So he should play close to here, and then one other player should move here. So in the Nash equilibrium, uh, it's somehow rough, like the rough intuition about the proof. So in the Nash equilibrium, you should have two players playing on each of these paths of length three. So this gives you I mean, with this number, you have that if you have nine players, then you have two players play here, two here, two here, two here, and one here, and then you don't have an equilibrium because somebody wants to move to one of the paths which don't have two players on it. So this is the general idea of this counterexample, and this gives you this upper bound. So f of k is at most 3k over 2, roughly, plus 2. So we have this gap between the the trivial lower bound of k and this counterexample of 3k over 2. So it would be a 2 on each branch. 
Yes? And you have another one here. Mm -hmm. so uh, and, then, and then still, so this one would want to play here. Mm -hmm. And then one of these who plays here. So if you have two players, then one of them gains only one. The payoff is only one. And then you can gain if you move here. Uh, okay. Then you gain two. Yeah, this is the idea. Yes. So I think that this is somehow surprising. I mean, so at the beginning I wanted to prove that f of k is 2k, following the, 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 the thinking that, so if you have k vertices and k players, then each one controls one and, and you cannot improve. And somehow the intuition was that even if you have 2k, then each player somehow controls his neighbor and then nobody can improve. But this obviously is not true, but it's not clear what is the correct answer and how to improve either one of these. Okay, so this is roughly what I wanted to say. So, so we've seen that on path and cycles, almost everywhere, almost always, you got Nash equilibriums. For three players on grids, you don't have Nash equilibriums. As soon as the grid is big enough, five on five. And we've seen this gap of lower bound and upper bound on f of k for general graphs. Um, yeah, so some things that, that I didn't consider is uh, if you have more than three players on grids, but so again, I wouldn't want to do this case analysis for five players, but something, if you have a nicer way to prove that they exist or they not exist, my guess is that for odd number of players, there is no Nash equilibrium for grids. For even number, I, I don't know, actually. It could be. And yeah, and some, so, so lowering this, so closing the gap of this f of k is interesting also. And that's it. So, what you could like, what you could questions? Yes. So actually the first uh, walk in the model that I said, uh, Alon et al, they claim that uh, as long as you have diameter two, then, <coughs> sorry, then you don't have Nash equilibrium. And then it was, a, so there is a uh, flow in the proof and there's another, play, another paper saying, <coughs> sorry, saying something. So you have to have another, uh, a requirement which I cannot remember now, but yeah, but it looks like as soon as the diameter is is three, it should be. So I assume three. Then you can have graphs with no. What about trees? Yeah, so this counterexample is a tree also. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it could be that the answer is different from this f of k is different for trees or not, but. Oh, but maybe it's not monotone, no? Does it have to be monotone? I think not. I mean, if you have one player, then. Yeah, so this function is not monotone. So you, it could be true for up to seven, then false, then true for, because so it's true for one and it's true for the number of vertices. And in the middle it could be.
it's interesting, but I don't know. So I somehow considered this model with path and cycles. It was really easy, and then I didn't want to. But but yeah, it's it's it reminds of this hoteling also. Yeah. I mean this? Which is closer to one, mm -hmm. but it was assigned to three. Mm -hmm. And in the party competition, uh, it would be assigned to one. Because it's just that closer for one. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is a difference. Yeah, so your model is more closer to this Voronoi model. To what? To Voronoi. I mean, you just count the just count the distance. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, Yeah, sure. Yeah, all this model. 